Hello, I'm uh, Paul Beckwith at the University of Ottawa. Um, I'm a part-time professor teaching uh, climatology, meteorology, and I'm working on my PhD in abrupt climate change. Um, I'm an engineer with an engineering physics degree um, at McMaster University and also uh, have a Master of Science degree in uh, laser physics. And um, I've always been interested in following uh, climate change over the years. And for about the last four years, um, I've been doing uh, PhD work and coursework and so on. Um, on uh, and the reason why um, I chose uh, abrupt climate change is because, you know, the rapid changes in the weather and climate system um, were very alarming to me um, about four years ago, well before then, but about four years ago I decided, okay, you know, I have to go, go and study it in a more formal, formal setting. So today I'll talk about the extreme weather events that we're seeing around the globe and how they're directly related to climate change, how they come about because the statistics of the climate system have changed and all these weather events are taking place under these new, in this new system, under these new statistics. And I'll also talk about my hypothesis that we're, that the earth today is undergoing an abrupt climate change. Um, and this is new to, in human history, and uh, what it's doing is it will take our climate system from a nice stable state, which our parents and their parents and the great and grandparents and great great grandparents back about uh, 400 generations or so to the end of the last ice age have enjoyed the stable climate system um, and that is transitioning to a much warmer uh, system as much as four or five six degrees warmer uh, global average temperatures uh, than before and that this state could be arrived at in as little as a decade or two and uh, the, all the extreme weather events and craziness that we're seeing is just the beginning of um, this uh, abrupt transition um, which will get far worse um, before it uh, before it uh, ends so so basically um, we're at beginning stages of all hell breaks loose you know if you consider you know torrential rain and flooding events in cities like Calgary or in Toronto even, um, in, in whole states like Colorado and in whole countries like the UK now um, and uh, you know even like countries in, in South America, you know Bolivia, um, even in countries like Slovenia you know, massive ice storms that destroy 50% of the trees or damage 50% of the trees in the entire country. Um, vast areas um, under drought in some countries and under massive snow in other countries or massive torrential rains in other countries. I mean, we're just getting the whole gamut of widespread global weather extremes. And we know this is from uh, jet stream behavior. Um, jet streams are guiding weather events and the jet streams have slowed in the easterly component. Um, therefore, to conserve angular momentum, they move location and they're also bending and becoming much wavier. They're become, becoming much more affected by land ocean contrasts and topography rather than by pressure differences. Why are they being uh, distorted and deformed? Because they're, what ultimately drives them is pressure differences which, is ulti which are ultimately determined by temperature differences. And the temperature differences are changing on the planet because the 
The equator is not warming too much. The Arctic is warming at rates six, seven, eight times higher in the high Arctic than the rest of the planet. And uh, this warming in the Arctic is leading to more and more ice melt and snow cover melt. And we're getting methane coming up big time in the Arctic. So we're getting this loop here where we're getting more and more warming and more and more feedbacks, you know, which is distorting the jets. You know, why did we get this in the first place? Of course, greenhouse gases are up, right? So this is warming the planet overall, but some areas become vastly warmer than other areas. Also because for every degree C rise in temperature, the atmosphere can hold about 7% more water vapor via the clausius clapeyron equation. Um, and uh, so we've got a lot more water vapor in the atmosphere. When the water vapor condenses into clouds, it releases that latent heat, which fuels these massive storms. So the storms are not moving past a region. They're, they're more intense. There's a lot more water content and that water is coming out, causing massive flooding. Um, so, so this whole cycle is occurring, you know. Um, so, and I've talked about this um, for years in, in many videos, in blogs, um, in social media, Facebook and Twitter. So, fine, so where are we going? What's gonna happen next and how long is it gonna take? You know, if we do in fact go to this uh, much warmer planet. So, well, let's consider the, uh, where we were, where we were, you know, a nice white cap on, on the Arctic, you know, jet streams mostly running westerly to easterly with small meridional or north-south undulations, the Rosby waves, um, and the separation effectively representing the locate, the demarcation between cold or air masses in the north, cold, dry, and warm, humid in the south. Um, and then as the, um, that, that white cap is, is, is um, decreasing and the, we're getting more, less and less cold air. In fact, for the last two or three months, we've had anomalies of 20 degrees Celsius, warmer than normal temperatures in the, over the Arctic and 20 degrees Celsius or more cold temperature anomalies over areas like North America because these jet streams have been moving far south and have become very, very wavy. In fact, even big chunks of them have been breaking off and moving across, as we saw in some of the situations in, you know, recently. So, so this is where we're at now and where we were before. Now, you know, let's consider a uh, much warmer world where, you know, we do have this five or six degree temperature rise. So what, that, what, I could see, what I see happening is that basically the latitudinal um, temperature gradient um, gets greatly reduced in the northern hemisphere. So the equator, you know, um, the, the equator about 30 degrees C or so, you know, the Arctic, uh, you know, commonly was minus 40 degrees C, going to minus 20 degrees C with the 20 degrees anomalies and extending even more and eventually going above zero and being, you know, it'll be colder than the equator, but that temperature gradient of, you know, minus, of th plus 30 to minus 40 of about 70 degrees, you know, is reduced at least in half. So, you know, we have temperatures uh, as we go through this transition. Um, so, so we'll still have a temperature gradient, we'll still have air, We'll still have heat moving from the equator northward in the atmosphere and ocean currents, but it will be greatly reduced. And um, the nature of these jet streams and will be determined more by, as I say, land ocean contrasts. You know, the continents will be warmer than the oceans. Um, and as you move north, um, the, an the anomalies will increase, but they'll, so, so that we'll get this, um, We'll get this completely changing pattern um, in the northern hemisphere and of course in the southern hemisphere we have all that heat that used to move to the north now has to move to the south or cause um, 
you know, a warmer equator, um, or what happens at the equator is um, a lot of the energy is taken up in uh, producing more and more um, rainfall, more, more and more evaporation and more and more rainfall. So it goes into the latent heating. Um, but a lot of it, more of it will travel to the south, even strengthening the jet streams around the, the, the uh, Antarctica even more and uh, causing you know, places like Australia uh, to even to, to accelerate greatly with, uh, you know, in terms of heat waves and things. Um, so, um, so this is the, um, so of course, um, flora and fauna on the uh, planet um, eventually can adapt to new, um, new uh, climate uh, situations, but there's, it, it takes time. And the rapidity of these changes is enormous, and it's something that they um, that, that, that they, they haven't experienced before. Um, you know, you could argue that we humans are the most adaptive of all species, but there is going to be tremendous um, changes to e everything in in in, in human. Um, actions on, on this planet and there, there, there's going to be huge um, issues with you know resources resource scarcity you know water issues crop issues um, you know in a changing climate a rapidly changing climate from year to year when things are changing um, there's there, there's no stability target to to aim for um, until the changes are completed um, it's going to be, you know, it's, it's going to be extremely chaotic for governments, for um, countries, for people, um, for, for geo, everything is going to be different in, in geopolitics. So that's a whole other set of videos, so I think I'll stop uh, here. Thank you.